All right, welcome back to another video on the channel, guys. Hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Today, I'm gonna be giving you guys a tutorial on the basics of Pixlr. So if you're familiar with my channel and have watched some of my other videos, you would know that I have a lot of Pixlr tutorials on my channel. And a lot of those tutorials were using the old Pixlr. Other than my most recent video, all of those older videos are using the old Pixlr, which is now not even available anymore. And after messing around with it a little bit more after my last video, I found a bunch of other things that you can do on here. And I thought I would go ahead and make this video before I go ahead and make any other tutorials. I think this is actually going to help you guys out a lot more and actually learning Pixlr and learning how to make your own graphics. Instead of giving you guys specific tutorials, I think it's a lot easier for you guys to learn the basics first and then go from there. So I would suggest if you guys have watched my last video on um, making a profile picture and making a logo, I would watch this tutorial and then go ahead and go back to that and try making it again. Just my suggestion because I found a bunch of other cool things that you can do and I'll go ahead and show you guys that in a minute. I also just wanted to say before we start the video, thanks for all the support on the last video. All the comments and likes, I really, really appreciate. It. I have no update yet on when I'm going back to work and when I'm gonna be able to start actually making money again So I really appreciate all the support on all of these videos too If I get enough support on this video, I will go ahead and make another tutorial just like this for Pixlr as well Maybe some more advanced options for you guys who are really looking to step up your thumbnail game or a graphics game or anything like that But that is enough jibber jabber. We'll go ahead and jump right into the video So flash is gone. You get the option of advanced E and playful X now I haven't really messed around with playful X much like the one on the right side I've only been using this one because I've I believe the right one is a bit more for like shapes and stuff like that but i've seen most people using the advanced e option so that's the one that i went ahead and learned so i'm just going to go ahead and click advanced e because that's the one we are going to be focusing on today and that's actually the one i'm going to be using for all my tutorials so right when you get on you're going to be hit with this screen right here um so it's nice because it actually automatically saves all of your history um like all your other projects that you've been working on like i haven't even saved them and they actually just automatically save on here which is super nice i can actually click on any of these and go into it and actually um just change like all the layers that I was working on before which is super super nice that's definitely something that was not available in the earlier Pixlr version I know that they didn't save like the progress as you were doing it so it say your PC crashes or your software crashes which I've never had Pixlr crash ever in my life um, it's actually gonna automatically save it anyway so you can go back into it um, when your PC boots up go back into it and it should be there so a few things I wanted to show you guys before we even get too far into this if you guys are a photographer or anything like that you actually have a stock search of stock images that you guys can use for thumbnails um, for different kind of photos maybe instagram photos or anything like that which i think is super cool um you can kind of search things on here and just find stock images for free that you guys can use without, i guess without worrying about copyright i would assume since they're all available for free that you don't have to worry about copyright i don't know i just think it's a cool touch that they added and that was not in the old pixeler so on the main screen you have your history you have the stock search which i just showed you guys and then you have create new so the default create new settings are 1920 by 1080 so if you hit create, that's about the exact size for a thumbnail, which is super nice. So if you guys want to have a thumbnail template, you guys can just click on that size. And if you work with any of this, save it and it will fit as a thumbnail for YouTube, which is super nice. So if you don't want to do that, um, you can actually change each of these, which is super nice. So if I want a square image, I can actually do 800, not 8700, 800 by, eight, oh my gosh, I can't type. 800 and then that will actually create a square image so if you guys are looking for maybe a profile picture um it's nice to have a square image that has the sides all the same and you guys can basically just mess around with this however you like to get a starting image like if you guys are looking for an exact width and height you can just enter it in here so other than that you guys can also change the background so if you guys want to start out with a transparent image which i do a lot um just don't touch anything this is already going to be transparent um if you guys don't want a transparent background you can click here and then it's going to give you the options of what background color you want to start off with this is also kind of a nice touch because you can choose between orange you know green and then from here you can choose any color in the entire spectrum and it's also cool because if you guys find a color that you guys like exactly you can find a number for it and you guys can enter that number right here and it will give you that exact color which is another super nice touch so i'm just gonna roll with transparent for now just for an example and then i'm gonna hit create if you guys found this video through youtube search or youtube suggested and you haven't seen my channel already i make a lot of graphics for video games and a lot of graphics like banners and thumbnails so th this example is gonna be like a little bit of a gaming thumbnail type of example but the same rules apply for like any other things so first of all to add any image to your project you're just gonna hit layer add image as layer and then you're gonna go ahead and find it now you usually start with the background i'm just gonna start with this since i used this in my last tutorial and the first thing i'm going to show you guys is the adjustment hue and saturation now hue just changes the color of your actual image so it changes everything to any color and i'm just going to go to a red color to kind of match what i was doing before and then saturation actually adjusts like how rich the colors are if that makes any sense so if you want a deeper red you're going to just 
push that up a bit more now i don't really adjust lightness a whole ton because that really blows out your picture but if you guys want to it's right here you can kind of go down and up depending on whatever you guys want and then hit apply and that's kind of one of the very first things that i think you guys should learn because you can adjust the color of pretty much anything any image that you have which i think is a really cool addition so now we're going to add a png to our thumbnail um so we're going to hit layer add image as layer and then we're going to go find our png i actually have a custom fortnite skin that i made myself that i can just apply here and it's red so it kind of matches the theme and then i'm going to add it right here now one of the first things i want to show you guys um just to help you guys out a little bit um this is what i always do with a lot of the pngs that i add um especially fortnite skins i'm going to make sure to click on that png and i'm going to go to adjustment brightness and contrast and this is actually one of the coolest things that i usually do that just helps with the quality of my images um, i'm gonna go to contrast and if you guys look closely at the png um if you adjust the contrast a little bit up it gives the image more dimension if that makes any sense um like if i go back to zero you guys can see it's a little washed out and then if i go up a little bit it's going to add that color and that vibrance to it which i think is a really good touch um i usually don't touch brightness at all because it kind of washes it out um then we're just going to go ahead and click apply and that's going to kind of give us a little bit more of a high definition quality image if that makes any sense so a few things right off the bat um that i just learned on here is actually this little three dots thing so this is a little different than the original pixlr um this is where you're going to find um duplicate layer so this is actually just going to create an exact copy of the png or whatever layer that i clicked on and then you can actually also lock the image from here so what this actually does is it locks it so you can't touch it um you're going to see that i'm not going to be able to drag the um png anywhere like it's locked in so i think that's a good touch if you have something that you've finished already in your image i would go ahead and lock it so then you don't mess it up at all if that makes any sense and then another thing that i found in this little um side section right here is you can flatten the image merge visible merge down and then also um you can delete the layer and you can also hide it as well. If you wanna work on other stuff like the background behind it, you can hide it and then you can just click visible again later and you go ahead and save your image. Now, another cool thing for overlays is if you have some overlays that you want blended into the background, you're gonna go ahead and click your layer, um, whatever layer you wanna edit, and then you're gonna go to blend mode and this is where you can find blends like um, overlay, um, multiply, lighten, soft light, hard light, difference. These are all basically the exact ones on Photoshop, which is pretty cool. So if I go to soft light, it's gonna kind of blend it into the background background um, if i go to hard light it's going to kind of blend it as well obviously these don't look good but you would use this more for other things like overlays onto your thumbnail um screen is going to blend it in as well um multiply they're all just going to do different things but say i wanted like my png in the background of my thumbnail this doesn't look bad and then i could always put the png over it as well kind of like an overlay so i want to edit the background a little bit um, i'm actually going to take this png here and i'm going to go ahead and put it to hidden so I can add the background. I'm going to click on this layer and I'm going to show you guys the bucket option, which I think is a cool addition. And I didn't think this worked the same way as it did before. Um, so this is the bucket here. It's going to fill um, a shape or image in your layer. Um, now, what you guys need to know here is that this color down here, this is going to be the color for the bucket, the top one. So if you want it to be white, you're just going to leave it on the default white. But if you guys want it to be black, blue, green, um, you could adjust it from here. Or if you want the exact color, you can choose the color from the little pointer here. I'm just going to go with white as an example. And then this is actually if you click right in the middle of a shape on your background or on your layer, um, it's actually going to automatically fill it, which I think is super cool. Um, you can click all of these right here if I want to make them white, which I think is kind of a cool touch. We can click here and it's actually going to make them all white. So that's one of the cooler things I found on this software that I actually couldn't figure out before. Um, now I'm going to show you guys a little bit about adding a stroke to an image, um, adding strokes to text, um, adding text and stuff like that. So I've edited my background the way I wanted it. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the PNG that I added visible so I can actually see it. So if you guys want to add a stroke or an outline to your image, um, make sure you're on the layer that you want to add the stroke to and then hit edit and stroke and you can go to size here and adjust the size now my image isn't cut out perfectly as you guys can tell so the stroke isn't smooth but um on text the stroke's gonna be smooth on most images that have flat edges it's gonna be smooth so you can edit the size you can edit the opacity if you guys want like a glow um the feather is gonna make it more like a glow so if i edit the feather all the way up 
and then edit the size see how it's going to make that like glow behind it if that makes any sense this is going to be the same way for any other image and any other background that you have if you want to add a stroke to any image it's going to be the same way you're going to go to edit and stroke on your layer so that was one of the other things that i didn't even know before i did my last tutorial so i showed you guys earlier the bucket option i'm gonna show you guys a few more things on how to utilize that so say i wanted some background stars behind my png um, so what I'm going to do here is I actually saved a PNG of a star on my desktop. So I hit add image as layer and I go to my desktop here and I find that star right here. And it's going to take a second. There we go. And as you guys can see here, the star is gray and obviously I want it a different color. Now what you guys could do is go to adjustment hue and saturation and to change that. But here's another way to get it to your exact color. So if I go to my bucket and I select the star and I have the uh, white, then I can actually just fill the star with white, which is, I think a really good option and it's really quick and easy. And from here, what I can do is adjust the size. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. See, that's why locking is a good option because then it's not gonna mess with any of the other stuff. So then I can actually lock this as well. It's already locked. And then I can go ahead and just start adding these to the background and I can drag that underneath. Hold on, is it gonna let me drag underneath? Oh, well, this one's locked. I think I have to unlock them to actually, there we go. So we're going to put this unlocked. So I'm going to duplicate this layer right here, the star. I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to duplicate this layer right here. I was duplicating this a bunch of times so I can have a bunch to put in the background. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time. And from here, I can kind of just start adding them to the background and make this one a little bit bigger here. And I'm going to drag this one over here. This one up here. And I'm going to duplicate this one just to add one more up here. And as you guys can see, it's an easy way to get the images that you want and get the exact color of the images you want. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little bit of the options that you guys get with text. So I'm going to hit the text tool. I'm going to hit add text. And you guys can see my fonts actually pop up. So the coolest thing about this Pixlr is that um, the add fonts or the way you add fonts like custom fonts from defont.com is so, so much easier than the last Pixlr. What you guys need to do is actually go to defont.com, find any font that you like and click download. And then it's going to bring up the zip file. And then you're just going to find whatever one you want and you're going to save it to your desktop. So once you find it in your desktop, you are going to go ahead and click the font and hit add local font. And as you guys can see here, um, this is the font that I was using. I would just double click it and then it automatically adds it to your font selection. Um, as you guys can see here, I have already done this and it actually saves it for future. So whenever I go on Pixlr, my fonts that I saved earlier are already there, which is honestly a super nice touch because I could not stand the old way that Pixlr would use for adding fonts. It would take forever for it to show up. I would restart my PC. Um, it was just really, really annoying. So I'm gonna put, I don't know, just example as as my text because I don't really know what else to do here. Um, click the pointer and I can actually go and what you guys should do here is click on the text and adjust the size to be a little bit bigger before you actually rasterize the text. Because if you guys start out with the small text and you guys rasterize it into an image and then you stretch it out bigger, it's going to lower the resolution and it's going to be grainy text. So you want it to be a little bit bigger so you guys can work with it when you actually start stretching text. Um, I'm actually going to make it a tad bit bigger like this. And then what you guys can do here, um, if you have your text, make sure you have it spelled the way you want to and you don't want to add anything else because once you rasterize it, you cannot edit the text. Um, so you're going to go to layer and rasterize text as element. And this is going to basically make your text an image. So now we literally have our text as an image. What I can do here is kind of put it in the center and I can always stretch it out now to however I want it. So if I want it wider, I can make it wider, which is super nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to add stroke to your text. So if you guys already rasterized your text, I apologize as I did this in the wrong order, but I'm going to have to start over here. So if I double click add and I put example again and do this, 
So I have my text that is not rasterized. So now I want to click on it and you can actually up here adjust like line space, letter space. Um, you can make it italic, you can make it bold, you can do all sorts of things which I think is super cool. But the thing is, it's actually up here. So you can add a background. So this is going to add like a colored background which you guys can actually choose. Um, you can do a line background which is cool or you can do a word which is also pretty cool. So that's the background portion. Um, you guys can do just full line or word which is kind of nice. Um, I'm going to turn that off. And then for outline, this is actually going to be the stroke for it. And you can actually adjust the size right here. And honestly, I think the stroke in this pixeler looks really, really nice, like surprisingly nice compared to a lot of the other ones. So maybe if I go for maybe just a black, um, this is er, actually the gray kind of looked pretty nice. I ain't even going to lie. So you get kind of like a stroke on the outside, which is super nice. So once you guys have your stroke, you have everything the way you want it. Then I would recommend going and rasterizing your image, which I believe again is under layer, rasterize text and element. And now you have your image, which you can adjust like the width, the height, everything like that. So I think this is gonna be everything that I wanted to show you guys in today's tutorial. I feel like there's a lot more for me to show you, but I don't wanna make the video too long and too dragged out. I kinda just wanted to make it a beginner's guide to just basically making thumbnails, making the basic graphics that you may need for anything for YouTube, um, for maybe your Instagram or for social media. So if you guys want to go ahead and save it, um, you're going to hit file, save, and then you can save it as a PNG. But since this one isn't transparent in the background, I'm just going to do a JPEG. And I would recommend dragging the quality all the way up, keeping it on high, keeping everything the same, and just name it whatever you want. You can name it thumbnail or logo or anything like that. Click download and it's going to show up on your toolbar down here. I usually click show in folder, and then I usually just drag it to my desktop. This is the image that I got as a final result. As you guys can see, um, it's a pretty high resolution image and it looks really nice, honestly. Like I could see a lot of people making really good thumbnails and I made a ton of my old videos. Like if you guys go through my channel, I made all my thumbnails with this software, um, with the older version. But as you guys can see with this, this makes like a lot nicer thumbnails. I think you guys could really make all of your stuff for free on this. And this software always runs like Photoshop crashes on me all the time. Um, Photoshop can run slow if I'm doing too many things at once. Pixlr is always like lightning fast. So I would highly recommend using Pixlr guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to answer them. Please show some support by liking, subscribing, and commenting on this video if you guys want to see more types of content like this. I appreciate you guys watching. Have a wonderful day. I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.